individual and in no manner represents the official record of this board. The board therefore takes no responsibility for such private recording and completely disavows any future use. Roll call, please. Uh, Ms. Burns? Here. Ms. Kelly? Here. Ms. DeCaro? Here. Mr. DePrima? Here. Mr. Dunn? Here. Mr. Giordano? Here. Ms. Lent? Here. Mr. Sulikowski? Present. Ms. Ellis Foster? Here. Farm exists? Hey, thank you. All right, thank you everyone for joining us this evening. If we can all uh, stand for the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the, to the flag, flag of the United, of the United States, States of America, America and, and to the republic for which it which stands, stands, one nation, nation under, God, under God, indivisible, indivisible with, with liberty and, and justice, justice for all. all. Thank you everyone. And if I would ask everyone for a moment of silence, those standing, please stand, that the board uh, acknowledges the death of Grace Lynn uh, Lutwin from Sedexco, and we express our deepest sympathy to her family and friends. Thank you, everyone. Yes. Again, thank you for joining us this evening. Um, and we'll actually kick off with our code of ethics corner. And Mrs. Kelly, I believe you. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry, volunteered this year. This week. The code of ethics corner highlight of the month. The board member will support and protect school personnel in proper performance of their duties. Thank you. Um, on the agenda, first up, we have approval of the minutes. We have from October. If I could have a motion, please. Lent will move it. Thanks, Mrs. Lent. Can I have a second? Callie will second. Thank you, Mrs. Callie. Any discussion comments? Seeing none, uh, roll call, please, Mr. Mara. Ms. Burns? Yes. Ms. Callie? Yes. DeCaro? Yes. DePrima? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Giordano? Yes. Ms. Lent? Yes. Mr. Solikowski? Yes. Ms. Ellis Forster? Yes. Resolution one passes. Thank you. So first up, I'm gonna stop sharing so we can all see this. Uh, we have our high school representative, uh, Dan Rita. Hi to everyone again. Um, as you may know, my name is Danny Rita and I am the Oldbridge High School 2020 to 2021 school president. Um, staying strong through this virtual year, we have been making the most of what we can and every day reminding ourselves that we are going to do great things this year. And just a reminder that we are always here for everyone if anyone ever needs anything at all. Um, as we do every year, Oldbridge High School is getting behind AJ Silvestri and supporting his Make-A-Wish campaign. This year, the campaign looks a little different than usual because AJ has paired up with Jillian Bresnick. They have renamed the campaign to the Believe in Unicorns campaign in memory of Jillian's sister, Kendall, who is a Southwood student that we unfortunately lost this past spring to brain cancer. We are collecting all wishes virtually. And if anyone is interested in the link to submit a wish, you can email us at studentsenate at obps.org and we will send you the link. For every wish that is made, Macy's donates $1 to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Um, the community of Oldbridge also is in the process of helping out one of our own. We have a ninth grader who is in the hospital currently battling leukemia, and we are putting together fundraisers to support Bryce and his family, which includes selling stickers and t-shirts with a catchphrase of, as a knight, no one fights alone. As you shop around Oldbridge in the next few weeks, you may see some jars at the registers asking for loose change to donate to Bryce's family. And we are calling that the loose change for love campaign. If you can donate anything, we would greatly appreciate it. And the clubs of the high school also have been involved in creating a virtual get well card with personal messages for Bryce to make him happy during this tough time. Um, the Senate board has continued to meet virtually weekly 
in order to keep coming up with new events and activities to keep us together while we are apart. You can keep up with all the new and exciting events by following us on our Twitter, at SenateOB. And as always, we got this, Overage, and we got you. Uh, thank you, Dan. Um, I just had a thought, and I don't know if, if we could, you know, some of the fundraisers that are going on, I know they might be out on Senate and such. Could we put those also on the district site, potentially? Yeah, definitely. I can get the links to you. Okay, great. All right, thank you. Anything, anyone have anything for Dan? I think there's just fabulous, wonderful things that uh, help support everybody. So thank you. Anyone else? Dan, um, just, just uh, to... if you can email them to me, um, I'll, I'll make sure they get on the site. Just a thought I had with the loose change for love for Bryce. Um, I know I met with the township representatives today. We had a very successful um, COVID testing drive where the parking lot, you know, all the way to GNC was packed. If we kind of like took what they do at the firehouses and put like a garbage can out there and as people buy, drive by, they empty their, you know, the change from within their car and can drop it in as they drive by on both sides. You know, you know, some of these even have to man it. They can just kind of put signage up and have people uh, drop their changes to go by. That might be a good way to pick up some extra uh, spare change for love. Yeah, that would definitely be good. I just want to say thank you to you and your peers for keeping all this stuff going during these difficult times. Good job. Of course. Dan, you're doing a great job. Thank you. Thank you. All right, great. Thank you again, Dan. Uh, now, now, next, having hard, big shoes to fill, uh, we'll move on to uh, Mr. Cividino's, uh report. Go. Thank you, Madam President. Um, we're just going to go over uh, some of the data, some new data in here from COVID as it impacts the school district. Um, some of the data that we have here is some of the information we had from last week at our uh, an agenda meeting, but there's some new stuff as well. So if we go to our second slide. This reflect is reflective of, um, again, the increase in daily cases. And I have today's data uh, as they get towards the end of the slide. But this is what we're looking at as we um, had presented to the task force last week, um, our seven day average. And, you know, sadly enough, the seven day average has increased um, from just last week. On um, the next slide, we're gonna look at the hospitalized patients in New Jersey. Um, obviously we see a, a big increase from August to September. Now these are hospitalized with COVID uh, related symptoms. Um, one of the things that, you know, people would kind of dispel, well, the, the, the numbers are up because we're testing more. Well, that's not relative to the number of people in the hospitals. Just because you're testing more doesn't mean more people are hospitalized with COVID. So obviously we're seeing an increase in patients that are impacted to the level that they have to be hospitalized and taking up, um, obviously, space in the hospital impacts the, um, the care that you can receive when you have more people in there at the same time, it spreads the resources even thinner. So that's what kind of makes it such an emergency within the community in the state of New Jersey and the United States as a whole. I think you skipped a few slides. Because there's an ICU slide, I think, too. Okay, so, and these are patients with ICU that are in the ICU, obviously um, beyond hospitalized and using um, ventilators and such in the ICU units. Obviously, you know, again, a alarming number has increased um, across the state of New Jersey. And the numbers are even higher again this week than last week. Um, this data is kind of like um, a, a week's worth of information. On uh, the week of July 31st, we had one COVID case in the township the whole week. Um, you remember that's significant because August 4th, we had to pre present our uh, reopening reentry plan to the public. And that's the data we had to use at that time. Obviously now looking at last week's data, there was an increase and in, this is um, over the course of um, one week, not the Monday to uh, Monday that um, Oldbridge uses, but I didn't have that data at the time when I was using it. So um, it was one it was the week uh, of the 16th and obviously an increase that week of 154 cases. Um, for the week in Old Bridge. So this is NJ.com's data. And I, I find what is 
troubling here. You're looking at the 24th. Uh, our seven day average is 4,000. Last week's data, like I showed you, was mid threes. Now we're looking at a seven day average of 4,000. Today's new cases are 4,275. When we started planning the process uh, for re, re entry uh, back in early July, the um, seven day average was in the 150 range uh, to 200 range. Now we're looking at a seven day average around 4,000. And you could see for the first time in a long time, we're actually above the spring numbers. The worst we were in the spring, uh, we are at that or above that number right now um, in this wave of COVID-19, which obviously is the reason why New Jersey was moved to a, the majority of New Jersey was moved to a high risk uh, region. And this is just Middlesex County. Um, so our seven day average is 338 cases. And as of the 24th, we have uh, 456 cases re reported throughout the county. Again, um, that number just below our highest springtime no total, which was in April. So this is our most up-to-date information on how it's impacted the school district. You can see at, as of t today, um, we have 14 staff members that are positive and 49 were in quarantine, which is good. We've, we've dropped it from 74. And that is a rolling number kind of changes as we go on as, as staff members will go into a 14 day quarantine and after the 14 day comes out, obviously the more impact they have in school and it's not so much of the contraction or the transmission of the virus, that's the biggest problems in the school. It's the contact tracing, the close contacts that we have. So when anyone comes into school, and then test positive at a sub, uh, at within 48 hours of being in school, we do the contact tracing process as prescribed by the Department of Education. And any of close contacts that anybody who more than 15 minutes over a certain period of time are gonna be people that are, are deemed as close contacts that you have to um, remove and, and quarantine for 14 days. So currently, you know, there's roughly 50 um, staff members who are quarantined and you know, if, if done properly, you know, will not be spending the Thanksgiving with their immediate family when quarantine, you should be isolating yourself at home. Um, and there's even new information coming out from the Department of Health um, in reference to um, living arrangements at home, whether the person at home should be quarantining. Now the Department of Health is leaning that way now as the numbers of cases that are, are increasing. Um, our student uh, positivity, uh, positivity number has increased even though we have been, um, uh, on remote for the past few days. Um, again, a lot of the student cases are cases that we um, can trace to outside. Um, and we had, uh, I think the football team came off quarantine, uh, a lot of those members. So we dropped down at 159 to 143. But again, while that comes down, some go up as the number of students go up that are in quarantine. Uh, we still have 13 cases pending out there. And that may be someone who's symptomatic but hasn't been tested yet or, or looking for an alternative diagnosis. The, not, don't go yet, one of the most concerning ones was um, this past week I put a notification out about a Memorial School student. And when Miller School went full remote for two weeks, that was because we could not ascertain with any reliability where the, the COVID was coming from. We had uh, three members of the community, the school community at Miller who tested positive, who had no contact to positives outside the school. No friends were positives, no uh, um, family members at home were positive. The only thing they had in common was Miller School. Um, even though we were unsure of the, the how it would have been transmitted in school, so we contacted the Department of Health and according to the CDC and Department of Guidelines, Miller School was placed on remote learning for two weeks. Now at Memorial School, even though we just had started the remote, it would have been placed on remote anyway because it was one of the first cases in which we can, um, with confidence, determine that the COVID case that we just um, re reported was related to contact within the school, within another peer within the school, having tested positive. We took the, um, the student, placed the student on quarantine, and then the student tested positive without any contact outside of being with a positive person um, within, you know, obviously uh, friends or family out on the outside. So the only contact to a positive person happened in school 
and the transmission of the virus, we believe, came from in-school contact as well. And that, was, of course, was the, reported to the Department of Health. And that would have been another instance since if we had not already been um, in a remote learning situation, that we would have been on remote learning because of that at, at Memorial School. You can see the total numbers there at the bottom. Over the course of this, 198 staff members have been impacted um, through COVID and 305 staff uh, students. Um, this is the data from the last um, day in which we tracked it because we were not, um, we were in person uh, learning. And these are the number of classes that, or staff members that were unfilled on that day. Um, obviously that became our, one of our biggest um, obstacles as we were going through this. Every time we had a reported case, whether it was reported from, again, majority reported from outside, outside school contact, it was the it was the contact tracing as required by the Department of Health that we were, for lack of a better term, hem hemorrhaging staff on the inside. We would be lose, we would have three cases during the course of a day and lose, you know, 24, um, 20 to 24 staff members uh, through close contacts. And it became difficult for us to staff, staff our, our classrooms. Um, as of right now, we average, you know, prior to being remote, we had an average of about six to eight um, steady substitutes. Substitutes are they're very difficult to find right now. So in the years past, when even we had the flu season or anything else, that's how we would have handled it, through substitutes. At this point with the COVID, you, it's, it's very difficult to find substitutes. So we do it through class coverage. Class coverage means we pay a staff member to fulfill the class uh, for another teacher uh, during their off period. Well, when you're reducing the number of staff that you have available in the first place, you have left staff off on certain periods that you can cover the classes with. So it came to a point where I, I went to our assistant superintendent uh, of personnel, Dr. Hoker, and I said, you know, where are we at with staffing as of tomorrow? And we were still open on that Friday, but we had to contact parents to let them know because of the dire situation we we're in um, with staffing to please keep their children home because we did not have enough staff to safely open um, for all of our classes on Friday. So if it was, um, especially like an elementary classroom, we have one um, or two teachers, uh, we just asked the parents to keep their children home. The high school students, they could have two or three teachers during the day, but if one teacher is absent, they would go to a, um, a, a shared area where they can be online and still be supervised and get their, their learning online remotely through the teacher who may have been home because of quarantine. So that was a, a problem that we're, we were having and a lot of the larger districts that I talked to superintendents are also having a very similar problem. And while some have stayed remote, never opened, or were, were in an open situation like we were, hybrid, uh, but then went to remote. So this is the information that came out from the New Jersey Health uh, Department last week. It comes to us, the superintendents through the links um, network that provides us and first responders with information as to the state of the um, health of this, the state through COVID. And last week for the first time, as you can see in orange, we have not been orange um, since May and uh, of 2020. And it put most of the state, the state overall in high situation, high risk situation, and the majority of the state, except for the Southeast, in a high risk situation. Um, what does that mean? We're gonna go to the next slide and find out. So this is information that is updated and provided us Department of Health. It's based on the science in which they give to us. Now there are people in political offices who make their recommendations and suggestions based upon their feelings, but in education, you have to use what's given to you by the offices of science. So. When we were at a yellow area, which we were since most of the fall, we were using their recommendations. Consider a mixture of remote and hybrid. That's what we were doing. Um, when, the, the, in the, when we had a, a low risk area, then evaluate alternatives for in-person, um, but look for opportunities for in-person education. So now that we've rented a high risk, the Department of Health um, has clarified for us that we should be considering fully implementing fully remote learning at this time because of the number of cases. Now, we'll see what tomorrow brings. They usually update it um, towards the end of the week. 
uh, if we're going to be at very high risk because our numbers across the state are actually higher than they were in the spring. We'll see where that leads us. But that consideration, the top line there, and when it came to me from the Department of Health um, in an email in paragraph form, not by the chart they always give us, it was highlighted, consider implementing full remote education as of today's report. So then I reached out to our attorney. I said, this is concerning for me because let's say worst case scenario, one of my students, one of my staff members becomes seriously ill or worse. What is the board's liability and has their liability increased now that there's a document out there that's saying the Department of Health is recommending to us or not even recommend, it's basically telling us that we should be considering remote only education. And if we defied that direction or defied that recommendation and something happened to a staff member or a student, wouldn't the first thing an attorney would say is, well, you defied the Department of Health's guidance. You the Department of Health was telling you that they would recommend that you consider um, putting everyone on remote learning. So I asked our attorney that question. I don't know if he wants to weigh in, I don't want to put him on a spot, but um, do you want to, Chris, do you want to go over your, your response to me? Yeah, I'm happy to do that, Dave. This is, uh, we did have that discussion and it was an important one to have. This chart that's on your screen right now is actually uh, page three from the September 8th Rules of Engagement that was promulgated by the New Jersey Department of Health. Uh, these are very similar to a series of speed limits on a series of different types of streets. And it was produced for you before you came back to regular education this year. And the colors also correspond to uh, the street analogy. This rule has been in effect since the get-go. When things get bad enough, the Department of Health has always said, regardless of where the executive orders have stood, you need to consider going fully remote. Unfortunately, based on the slides, the last couple of slides, and the data at the first couple of slides that Mr. Cittadino showed, there's no question that your liability goes up. If you're speeding, you're undertaking a risk. If you're violating Department of Health regulations and recommendations regarding public health, certainly there's risk there to the people that you're responsible for, and in a different way, risk to yourselves as the administration and, and board of a school district. So we did that have that discussion. Dave, you're certainly accurately saying what I told you, and that, that advice remains. And it's if you look at the newspaper headlines, this is not the only district making these decisions, difficult though they may be. Uh, it's becoming a very clear trend statewide. And it's very unfortunate, but that doesn't make it any less true. Thank you, Mr. Barton. So the next slide is how do we respond to this? How do, how do we deal with this situation? And I couldn't be more proud of this partnership that we have with the township. And I have to really commend um, the mayor, Hamachu uh, Shaw, who's the BA there, um, Rose Riverly, who's been, uh, they're kind of their point person in, in this process. Um, the OEM, um, Tom Garrity, Mike Petschauer, um, even Ruth over there is a good friend of mine with the CERT team. Um, just everyone pitching in to make this possible that, and I talked to superintendents and I looked and I, and I shared and I, that the county uh, testing there's no other township driven mass testing going on. Everything else is coming through the county. To have a partnership like this with the township, um, the Board of Education working together to put this out for the people during this time really speaks volumes to how much everyone uh, that I just mentioned and, and so on, you know, the OEM, the police department, Pat does a great job giving us the information, um, is so caring for this community because the information is clear. Social distancing, wearing a face covering and getting tested, testing those ACE uh, symptomatic people who are, have the potential to spread the virus but don't know they're spreading it because they're asymptomatic. That's the way you defeat the virus outside of a vaccine. Now we have all the hopes in the world for a vaccine soon, but as of right now, this is our best measure. We had three days worth of testing. I know it was frustrating for some people because people said, well, I had to wait in line for three hours. Go anywhere where you want to go right now to get tested. You're going to wait in line or told to come back four or five hours later. Um, to have to wait in line in your car is better than waiting in line outside, which I've seen a lot of the um, 
walk-up locations that are around the area. So, and I know that, you know, many of the people that I've spoken to um, have already gotten the results. The lab, Synergy Lab, um, which is over there on 35 in Aberdeen, is a, he's pledging and working as hard as he doesn't want to call it a promise. He's working a test to get results in 24 hours is like earth shattering. Right now, PCR tests are averaging anywhere from three to six days. So the fact that he has his own lab and his testing his own, his own samples allows us to get this out to you faster. Um, as today, he told me um, his estimate is we tested 1,300 people today. I mean, the past, the same excellent people earlier. Oh, did I freeze? Frozen. Oh, not frozen anymore? Yeah, but I think you're okay now. Okay. You're back. Um, I talked to him earlier. We're going to look for days coming weeks as, as well to keep this going. So um, that is in conclusion of my portion of the report. What I'm going to do is um, I'm going to try to get a hotspot and see if I can make my connection a little better. But I'm going to have Kathy give us a little update on the Wednesday schedule and a committee she's forming. And then after that, have Dr. Tui um, chime in and give us some information about a new directing directive we're giving to our students who are learning remotely. Thank, thank you very you. much. All right, Dr. Hoker. All right, thank you. Um, so I'll start with the committee because that's more exciting. Um, I think everybody can recognize that we're in for some challenges in the next few months, however long, um, the remote learning lasts and, and getting through the holidays and trying to stay together without being together. Um, I've talked to some of our administrators and asked for volunteers to sit on a committee. We are calling it the positivity committee, trying to get together. We want to have some parent representatives, some student representatives, staff representatives um, to come together and come up with strategies to keep us together, keep our students engaged and motivated um, and to support our, our, not only our students, but our parents um, and our staff to get through the next few months. So just some of the things that we've talked about already are um, Mr. Cidadino and I have done lunch bunch with our elementary students trying to figure out a way, how do we do that virtually? Um, we did ran field day in the springtime and brought the whole district together with a little bit of competition. What kinds of things can we do um, similar to that? Maybe um, athletic challenges in the new year. Um, again, little competition can kind of bring people together, different events and um, support systems to just get us through the hard times. Um, the other thing that we just wanted to mention and is on our website is the schedule for tomorrow. We do have an official um, early dismissal for not just students, but for staff. So at each of our levels, the elementary school will run um, its early dismissal day starting period one at 9, uh, 9 10 a.m. and ending their day at 1 10. So that is for staff and students, there are no afternoon classes. The middle schools will begin their day at 8 a.m. with period one and their end of day is at 12 noon. So no afternoon classes there either. The high school schedule, first period starts at 8.25. There are office hours at 7.35, um, but the school day ends after fourth period with, at 11.40 a.m. So again, our staff are also have an early dismissal tomorrow. There are no classes or no afternoon um, office hours for tomorrow. Have a happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Dr. Tui. Thank you, Dr. Hoker. Um, as we're looking to improve our in-person and remote instruction techniques within our current instructional model, uh, we're continuing continuously reevaluating how we're presenting information to students um, through our, uh, unfortunately, currently uh, full remote model. Um, this would have gone into effect either way um, if we stayed um, in our hybrid model or went to full remote. 
uh, but effective on Monday, November 30th. Uh, kindergarten through eighth grade students will be expected to utilize their camera for live instruction. Uh, one of the things that we have found is that students um, can potentially be uh, disengaged during the live instruction feature if they're not necessarily using their camera. So we are gonna ask parents, uh, students and staff to utilize their camera during the live instruction model for K through eight. Um, the high school students were, have been a little bit more engaged from the feedback that we've gotten from the high school administration and teachers. Uh, therefore, we're looking for all Albridge High School students to utilize their live camera for classroom attendance and all classroom assessments. Um, additionally, for both K through eight and also for the high school, uh, teachers will have the discretion to determine when the cameras can be on and utilized during live instruction. So if a teacher is looking to have a little bit more live instruction on a Monday or a Tuesday and potentially some more asynchronous instruction on Thursday and Friday, um, that would be at the discretion of the teacher. However, for K through eight, we are expecting to have the students utilize their camera uh, for live instruction and at the high school for attendance, for assessments, and then additionally, um, when the high school teachers are deeming it necessary uh, overall for the classroom instruction. The district overall acknowledges that the students might experience some anxiety or stress and parents might have some concerns about privacy issues when utilizing the camera. Uh, therefore, the district has set up a procedure to process potential camera exemptions for students and parents. Uh, to seek a camera exemption, uh, you would contact your student's school counselor and or their child study team uh, case manager uh, to set up a meeting to review your concerns. Uh, subsequent to the parent meeting, the school counselor or CST will contact the building principal and any camera exemption uh, would be, if any camera exemption would be granted, the student's teachers would be notified through the building principal. Um, this um, camera exemption um, outline will be on the district website tomorrow morning. Uh, parents, so parents can reference that if they have any questions. But beginning on Monday, November 30th, um, the district expectation is that cameras will be on for live instruction uh, with the help to more um, thoroughly engage our students on a day-to-day -day basis uh, in this all remote setting. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Tewey. Um, one of the things that we can talk about too is like even um, like if there's a situation, let's say I was in my bedroom right now and I didn't make my bed and I decided that I wanted to put this virtual background up. A student could do that as well, correct? Correct, absolutely. And the we can help that we facilitate can, that too. Right. The, key to, the key is to see the engagement, to make sure that, especially when doing assessments, that our students there, they're prepared to take the assessment and so forth, and not really to see um, what's going on in the background. All right. Um, Madam President, that takes care of the progress towards goals and our superintendent's report. Thank you. I just have one question. Is um, out on our tech resources, do we have the instructions on how to uh, make a virtual uh, screen in Teams? We don't have to answer that now. If we can check on that, maybe that would be something helpful to have out there in case people don't know how to put them on. Thank you. I was going to suggest maybe uh, you, Mrs. Lentz, and Mrs. Callie could um, <laughs> put two for us. <laughs> Not me, okay. I had help. <laughs> and then um, will, uh, will an announcement or, or something be sent home to the parents explaining about the camera use? So that everyone is aware. Yes. Okay. Great. It's going home with the weekend update on Wednesday. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you, Mrs. Savino. Uh, Correspondences. Uh, Mr. Mayor, do we have any correspondences? No correspondence. Okay. Um, I don't believe we have any special committee reports for this month. I think next month we will have some. Wait, I did yeah. have a. Wait, what about the athletics? Yeah. Yeah, I, I apologize. I usually like to read an in depth report on what, what, what transpired. I did not have it ready. Kelly and I spoke earlier. We're going to hold off to next month. Okay. on what happened. I agree. Thanks, so. Al. Yeah, and um, I know later we'll have policies uh, where we can talk about that. Um, next is hearing uh, of the residents on agenda items only. So uh, as a reminder, this is for any comments or questions on anything on the agenda only. Um, at the end of the meeting, there is, again, our other uh, public hearing portion on any item whatsoever. So 
if you are on the Zoom call and you will have a comment on an agenda item, if you can just raise your hand, if you're on the phone and you have a comment or question on an agenda item, if you hit star nine. Let me just see. Second, all right, I do not, I do not see anyone at this point raising a hand. So we will move on with the agenda. And again, we'll have our other uh, comment period at the end. So first up, policy. Uh, we have two second readings today and then a list of first readings. So if I could have a motion uh, for one and two on policies. Lent will move it. Burns will second. And Burns second. Okay. Um, just uh, just to recap on a couple of these, you know, we, we had updated board committees and those are out on the site already, out on our board site. So I thank Mrs. Tory for putting those out there. And then um, there has been an update um, to the remote uh, public board meetings. Um, and we will be putting in a new policy that will allow for emailing of comments uh, prior to a meeting. Uh, and in the next week or so, I would assume we'll have some information out on the district website of how to do that. But I don't know if Mr. Parton, if you had any specific comments you wanted to make on that. I think that's the biggest difference. There'll, there'll be some difference probably in the announcement at the beginning of meetings and there'll be more means of access for the public uh, that will be linked on the website so that everybody can see how, what your options are. But that is what the uh, Department of Community Affairs is emphasizing is that public meetings need to stay public during this time uh, and need to stay as accessible as possible. Great, so that's so we will then you'll have the option not only to call in to speak You'll have an email option um, and we'll have an email address and um, a timeline of when to have those in by so those will be out on the the, the site once we approve um, anyone on the board have any the questions or comments on either one or two yes yes mr giordano uh yes uh for number two with the uh, remote public board meetings i'm glad that we're being proactive on this but i hope we don't have to resort to Zoom meetings in the future unless it's like a large emergency. Like, I hope we don't just use this as an excuse going forward. That's all. Okay, just for a clarification, what this yeah. policy is, is a way that people from the public can provide comments at, via email, which is not an option that's available right now. So it's providing an additional option to the public that they can provide comments to the board to be read um, at board meetings. Yep. Also, okay. Mr. Giordano, the, uh, your, your point is well taken. This is not a permanent option. And actually the title of the, the bylaw is remote public board meeting during a declared emergency. So it's not something that can just be done on any given month. It is something that can only be done in extreme situations like what we have right now. Okay, thank you. Ellie? Yeah. I'm sorry, I got one question. I forgot to ask. Sure. As far as the committee meetings, I know it was recorded. Are they going to be on the website? Because last time I looked, it wasn't there yet. Um, yes, we can put it out there. I believe we, do we put the recordings out there, I believe. I don't know. It's, I don't know if we there. put those out there as a general rule. but. Okay, then it will, it'll just wait. No big deal. Anyone I, else? Yeah, thanks, Sal. All right, if we could have a roll call, please, Mr. Mayor. Ms. Callie? Yes. Mr. Caro? Yes. Mr. DePrima? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Giordano? Yes. Ms. Lent? Yes. Mr. Solikowski? Yes. Ms. Burns? Yes. Ms. Ellis Forster? Yes. Resolution 1 and 2 pass. Thank you. Uh, and then we just have for first reading a number of mostly mandatory, actually, I think all mandatory policies. Um, I don't know if Mr. Parton, if can I apologize, I can't remember if we went over these in the agenda, if there's anything in specific. 
Uh, we went over them briefly in the agenda meeting. I don't think there's anything that really requires further discussion during the first reading uh, in a public meeting. Okay, great. thank you. So we shall move on to curriculum, uh, professional development, um, items one through four. If I can have a motion, please. Callie moved. Callie? Second. And Ms. Flint, thank you. Any discussion or questions, comments? Seeing none, can we have a roll call, please, Mr. Mara? Mr. DePrima? Mr. DePrima? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Giordano? Yes. Ms. Lent? Yes. Mr. Solikowski? Yes. Ms. Burns? Yes. Ms. Callie? Yes. Mr. Carroll? Yes. Ms. Ellis Foster? Yes. Resolutions one through four pass. Thank you. On to athletics. We have one item. If I could have a motion, please, for athletics, number one. Carol, a motion. Uh, I heard DeCara. DeCaro first and Lent second. Is that what it was? DeCaro first, Lent second? Okay. Thank you. Any discussion, comments on athletics? Seeing none, can we have roll call, please, Mr. Mayor? Mr. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Giordano? Yes. Ms. Lent? Yes. Mr. Sulikowski? Yes. Ms. Burns? Yes. Ms. Callie? Yes. Mr. Carroll? Yes. Mr. DePrima? Yes. Sells Foster? Yes. Resolution one passes. Thank you. On to finance, one through 12. If I can have a motion, please. That will make a motion finance items one through 12, Madam President. Thank you. Council second. Burns, and Burns, Burns. Oh, okay. thank you. Yes, Burns. Uh, any questions, comments? Okay, all right, no questions, comments. If we could have a roll call, please, Mr. Mara. Mr. Giordano? Yes. Ms. Lent? Yes. Mr. Solikowski? Yes. Ms. Burns? Yes. Ms. Callie? Yes. Mr. Carroll? Yes. Mr. DePrima? Mr. DePrima? Mute, Sorry, yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Ms. Alice Foster? Yes. Resolutions one through 12 pass. Thank you. Nothing this month or this week for non-certificated personnel office. So we will move on to non-certificated personnel operational one and two. If I could have a motion, please. Callie will move. Callie. Burns will second. And Mrs. Burns second, thank you. Any discussion, comments on one or two? All right, seeing none, can we have a roll call please, Mr. Mara? Mr. Solikowski? Yes. Ms. Burns? Yes. Ms. Callie? Yes. Mr. Carroll? Yes. Mr. DePrima? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Giordano? Yes. Ms. Lent? Yes. Ms. Alice Foster? Yes. Resolution one and two pass. Thank you. On to non-certificated personnel other one through seven. If I can have a motion, please. Lent will move it. Lent, second, please. Dunn will second. Mr. Dunn, thank you. Do we, uh, any comments? Mr. Solkowski. Any, you see, you were supposed to say discussion, yes. Discussion, discuss, discussion <laughs> or comment. Yes, we have uh, three retirees uh, this month. Uh, the first one is uh, uh, non-certified personnel, 
uh, Sherry Resnick. She, as Shabar School paraprofessional para aide, 13 years of service. Certified personnel, we have uh, Susan uh, Mazur, Carl Sandburg Middle School Science, 34 years, and Donna Grundy, uh, Carl Sandburg, or I'm sorry, jun Junior Self Middle School with 33 years of service. A total of 80 years of service for the three ladies. I wish you a lot of luck and uh, enjoy your retirement. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else uh, for not certificated personnel other? All right, seeing nothing, if we could uh, have a roll call, please, Mr. Mara. Ms. Burns? Yes. Ms. Callie? Yes. Mr. Carroll? Yes. Mr. DePrima? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Giordano? Yes. Ms. Lent? Yes. Mr. Sulikowski? Yes. Ms. Ellis Forster? Yes. Resolutions one through seven pass. Thank you. On to certificated personnel, one through 16. If I can I have a motion, please. Then we'll make a motion. Certificated personnel items one through 17? 16. 16. 16. Thank you, Mr. Don. Uh, could I have a second, please? Giordano, second. Thank you, Mr. Giordano. Any questions, comments? And the discussion? Discussion and discussion. Discussion. Yes, yeah. um, Ms. Ms. Mazur was my eighth grade teacher, so I thank her specifically and specially on her years of service and wish her the best going forward. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? So I, I wish all three who are retiring, uh, thank you for your service and enjoy the well-deserved time you put in, so thank you. And if we could have a roll call, Mr. Mayor, please. Mr. Carroll? Yes. Mr. DePrima? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Giordano? Yes. Ms. Lent? Yes. Mr. Sulikowski? Yes. Ms. Burns? Yes. Ms. Callie? I am abstaining on item 5A and 16C. Otherwise, yes. Ms. Ellis Foster? Yes. Resolutions 1 through 16 pass. Thank you. Nothing on non certificated personnel transportation or supplies, equipment, and services. Brings us to miscellaneous, uh, no, sorry, transportation, uh, one through four. If I can have a motion, please. Lent will move it. Thank you, Mrs. Lent. Can I have a second? Burns will second. Thank you, Mrs. Burns. Any questions, comments, or discussion? All right. If none, can we have a roll call, please, Mr. Mara? Mr. Giordano? Yes. Ms. Lent? Yes. Mr. Sulikowski? Yes. Ms. Burns? Yes. Ms. Callie? Yes. Mr. Caro? Yes. Mr. DePrima? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Ms. Ellis Foster? Yes. Resolutions one through four pass. Thank you. And if we next is miscellaneous uh, one through seven. If I can have a motion, please. Callie will move. Thank you, Mrs. Callie. Lent will second. And Mrs. Lent second. Thank you. Uh, any questions, comments, discussions on one through seven? Okay, none. We could have a roll call, please, Mr. Mara. Ms. Lent? Yes. Mr. Solikowski? Yes. Ms. Burns? Yes. Ms. Callie? Yes. Mr. Carroll? Yes. Mr. DePrima? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Giordano? Abstain one, yes, two through seven. Ms. Alice Forster? Yes. Resolutions one through seven pass. Okay, and board 
Secretary and Board Business. Number one, if I can have a motion, please. Len, we'll move it. Oh, Len, Len. Okay, okay. sorry. Sorry. Was, was you breaking up or was me? But it might have been me. All right, Ms. Len, thank you. Can I have a second? Terms will second. We'll second. Thank you. Any comments, discussions, questions? Uh, Ms. Ellis Forster, generally I read uh, resolution number one uh, aloud. So, uh, number one, under board secretary and board business, move the board of education to acknowledge the Official results of the 2020 Board of Education election. Uh, Mr. Matthew Silikowski received 14,915 votes. Ms. Jill DeCaro received 11,793 votes. And Mr. Frank Weber received 11,403 votes. Uh, congratulations to those three board members. Vote, vote getters, I'm sorry. Thank you. Okay, I'm sorry, any uh, questions, comments, discussion? Oh, Mrs. Kelly, sorry, I, didn't, I see you waving your hand, yes. I just wanted to uh, officially congratulate um, Jill and Matt, and uh, those are record-breaking numbers, by the way. Congratulations, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, both of you. Welcome back, Frank, if you're listening. It's gotta be clean. It's gotta be hot. Our school tells a story. Okay. Well, I, you know, I, I do want to congratulate, uh, you know, Matt and Jill and also Mr. Weber. Uh, but I also, I do want to take an opportunity to thank Ms. Lent. Uh, she has been just, I, I, you know, I wonder on the, on the board. She uh, always makes us ask questions. She is open-minded. She uh, always, you were, you know, just, I think, an asset on the board. So thank you for your time. Um, and I'd also just like to acknowledge uh, Allison Voss, who also ran. Uh, you know, nobody does this and goes out and puts themselves out. Um, it's always an effort. It's hard to do. So congratulations, both of you ladies. And hopefully we still will hear from you. So thank you. If nothing else, can we have a roll call, Mr. Mayor, please? Mr. Solikowski? Yes. Ms. Burns? Yes. Callie? Yes. Mr. Carroll? Yes. Mr. DePrima? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Giordano? Yes. Ms. Lent? Yes. Sells Forster? Yes. Resolution one passes. Thank you. And now we are on we are on to hearing of the residents on any district topic. Um, if you are on Zoom, just raise your hand and I can unmute you. If you are on the phone, hit star nine and I can, um, we can get you unmuted also. Okay, so, all right, let me get over here. All right, so our first person up, I see Mrs. Uh, Fournier. I just unmuted you. If you unmute yourself, you should be able to speak. Yes, um, I just noticed one of the um, the policy things on the seizure action plan. Um, my daughter has uh, epilepsy, so I was just wondering what the change was. If there was a change, it just caught my eye and I was curious what that was. Mr. Parton? The primary change, Ms. Fournier, is that the parents are required to work with the school and the school district to make sure that you submit any information that you have from your medical home with regard to uh, seizure response plans, just to make sure that everybody knows what they need to know in case they have an incident during school hours. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, next. Up, um, I see Mrs. Garcia. Um, I I just unmuted you, so you should be able to speak. Perfect. Um, forgive me if I'm wrong here, but I didn't hear a mention of Mrs. Whitford in the retirees. And forgive me if one of the ones mentioned were her maiden name, but I do think we should 
thank her for her service in the Old Bridge school system. And she's a phenomenal teacher and she will be missed. Okay, thank you. I don't, um, I don't know, Dr. Hoker, I don't know. Oh, yeah, yeah, from been, Jonas Salk. Yeah, she, she may have been on a prior agenda. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yes, she was on the, the agenda in October. In October. Okay, good. Okay, thank you. Okay. So we certainly don't want to miss any of our... Right, I, we don't want to miss them, and for sure you can't retire until you're on this list, so we wouldn't have missed you, but um, congratulations to all of the teachers that are retiring. Um, I had the pleasure pleasure of being the principal for Ms. Whitford and Ms. Grundine. Class, wonderful teachers. Um, can't say enough good, good things about them. Um, so they're going to be missed in the, in the classroom and they're certainly going to be missed by their colleagues. Okay, well, I'm just looking at this time. I do not see any other hand raises. So at this time, we will close the public comment portion and on to old business, any old business. Anything old business? Any new business? Um, I actually have a question for Mr. Parton. Um, so uh, our previous caller who had a question about the um, epilepsy policy. How do we uh, get the policies out there to affected parents? Uh, the policies are linked to your website. As far as uh, direct uh, communication with parents who are affected because of their children's conditions, uh, that would go through Dr. Tui's uh, department. There is already articulation between the school district and the families. It will just be slightly different. Thank you. Anyone else? What I'll do for Mrs. Lent, I will talk to um, Audrey Baker, who is our nursing coordinator, and she'll give you a, um, you know, the medical plan for, you know, how the medical plan is developed for the students and how that information is shared and then how we, how we deal with the information as it comes back to us and getting the information out to the professionals in place that need to know. All right. Any order of the good? Does anybody have a hand up? Yes. I was raising this. Okay. Mr. Giordano. Uh, yes. First off, I'd like to say at the local level, the administration is doing a great job of keeping us safe and following the advice of the health guidelines. However, at the state level, we have to remember that we do have a constitution and we do have to respect the rights of people to do what they want to do with their own risk. So some orders that we have been seeing in the state, like curfews or like even saying how many people you can have in your own home seems like an overreach of the government and people just have to be aware of that going forward it, it's true we have to question and challenge that and we do have a vaccine coming up so i would assume things are going to go back to normal pretty soon and i hope they do and diet exercise vitamin c zinc keep yourself healthy be calm stay wise thank you Anyone else? Yes, I will be setting up a uh, curriculum meeting on December the 8th, which is a Tuesday. And uh, I'll sit down with uh, Dr. Tui and go over the uh, agenda, okay? And uh, we will publicize that. Is Joanne here? Yes, she is. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Kowalski. Anyone else? Madam President. Mr. Dunn. So, you know, everyone is concerned about uh, the resurgence of COVID virus 19. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of questioning regarding, you know, what the administration and the board is currently doing. And I can say unequivocally that the decisions that I made um, is in the best interest at this time um, for our district. Obviously, 
Um, Mr. Cedino made it very clear that we're having staffing issues and other issues uh, pertaining to our uh, correct operation of our district. And, and you know what, being a, a chief here in Old Bridge myself, I see the data just as Dave sees it. And there is a, a, a very large increase in cases and um, Middlesex County is one of the most uh, uh, infected uh, counties in, in, in the state of New Jersey. So the, the precautions that we are taking, you know, is disconcerting for some. And also for me who, you know, I'm a big advocate of getting kids back in school and having them learn in person. However, for the next two weeks, obviously with, with the holidays upon us over the next two to four weeks, you know, this is the, the, the prudent decision. And um, we, we, we ought to just, you know, go with it right now. And, and hopefully by the 19th, We'll be in a position where that we've we've got, gotten over the, the the hump and the berm, and we'll be able to get back to to in-person learning. I I agree, in-person learning is essential. However, the next four weeks with everyone getting together and people still, you know, exercising their constitutional rights to gather as a family and to celebrate, you know, this this decision by the district is is appropriate and 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 very important um, to keep everyone safe. Uh, with that said, I want to wish everyone a, a wonderful and thankful and terrific uh, Thanksgiving holiday. We have a lot to look back to um, for two, uh, 2020. You know, it's been one of those difficult years. And this is the time you should savor and love your families and give thanks for um, where we're at today and, and, and that we've overcome such uh, difficult hurdles. Uh, I want to thank everyone for for bearing and, and, and dealing with the situation and, and working together as a great community that we are as, as, as Old Bridge Strong. So with that said, again, happy Thanksgiving, everyone, and enjoy your family-oriented holiday. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Anyone else? You just want to just either unmute or just raise your hand so I can make sure. Yes, this flew over my head at the last meeting. Mr. Dunn, congratulations on your accomplishments with the uh, what you're doing with the, uh, I guess, the fire department and everything else. Thank you for your time and your service, okay? Man, I appreciate it. And you know what? One thing that's very dear to my heart is community service. And, and being the department chief of the South Overage Fire Department is a monumental responsibility. And I'm looking forward to uh, accomplishing that. And um, I can tell you unequivocally that it's a very important and dear um, responsibility to my heart just like the board of ed is as well so i wear many hats uh, but i'm for the community just like you are matt and i appreciate your service and congratulations again on being re-elected thank you thank you excellent mrs decara uh, um so i really just wanted to um say thank you to the re-entry task force and administrators and everyone that was involved in in the decision to um that that we had to make to uh to go all remote it was an extremely difficult decision and um you know taking all things considered with all, with the presentation that mr cittadino um gave us today i i just i just want to say thank you it was such a difficult decision but uh, it was one that needed to happen to keep every not not only to keep everyone safe but to man the classrooms because of our staffing issues so um i would just want to you know remind everyone to please stay safe wear your masks um try to social distance as much as you can um do the best you can we're all in this together and we need to fight this um this virus together as a team team old bridge team new jersey team usa whatever that is we're all human beings. We need to fight this together and, um, you know, try to get past it. And the only way we're going to get past this is if we work together and, um, and try to uh, stave off the, uh, the, um, the infection rates. So um, with that being said, uh, we're moving into the holidays. I want everyone, you know, I wish everyone to have a wonderful Thanksgiving in whatever fashion you choose to have it. Um, and just please stay safe. Thank you. Anyone else? This is Callie. Wanted to wish everybody a safe and healthy um, Thanksgiving. And um, again, thank our 
great administrators and our wonderful staff for everything that they do. And this has uh, been extremely difficult on everybody. And um, I'm thankful that we have all of you working so hard for us. And um, pray for me because I'm cooking Thanksgiving for the first time. <laughs> Stay safe, everybody. Thanks, Ms. Kelly. Anyone else? I go. Blunt. Yep, it's Blunt. <laughs> I just wanted to congratulate Matt and Jill. Um, you guys did a fantastic job. Congratulations on being reelected. Congratulations, Rich, on becoming chief. And I want to tell everyone to have a very happy and healthy Thanksgiving. Enjoy your family and time. That's it. Real quick. Thank you. Lisa, we'll see you next year when you rerun and win the election, okay? I don't know, Matt, but I'll definitely see you again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> All right, anyone else? We're all good? Just, uh, just happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Be safe. Uh, enjoy your special time with your family, and there's light at the end of this tunnel. We're coming through this. We're going to get to the other side of this. You know, in the spring, we were on the long side of it. Now we're on the short side of it. I see promise there, and... Um, we're just all out of balance right now. The world is out of balance. There's poverty, there's illness. We're going to get the balance and we're all going to be in a better place um, very soon. So think positive thoughts and uh, stick together. Have a great weekend, everyone. All right. Thank you, everyone. Um, so before we close into executive session, because I understand we have a short one, I just want to reiterate you know, some of the things that were said. Uh, I am thankful uh, for the people who are uh, run overage school district, our teachers who are doing just a, a phenomenal job in our paras, you know, keeping our kids going. I know the difficulty and, you know, our, our bus drivers, our maintenance, our, our nurses, um, it, the, the whole school community, the parents, you know, taking on the roles that you never planned on doing. So uh, I'm thankful uh, for all that. I hope everyone stays healthy this holiday season. Um, and as others said, enjoy the time that you have with your loved ones, however that looks this year. Uh, and with that, we are going into closed session for a short one, I hope, Mr. Parton. Um, yes, an executive session for matters of property disposition, personnel, and litigation. And we will not rejoin the public afterwards. So if I could have a motion, please, for executive session, a closed session. Lent will move it. Okay. Oh, second. <laughs> oh, oh. I can't. I can't. I can't win. Of right, course. Mr. Give it to Jill. That's fine. Give What's it the to second, Kelly. Uh, well, I, I will say Kelly. I just heard Kelly. So we're going to go with that one. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Extensions? We're going into executive session at 8 uh, p.m. All right. Thank you, everyone. Please be safe. Wear a mask.